Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, and we want to welcome you to our online worship experience. We thank God that you showed up here today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there will be a word that'll be spoken that'll transform and that'll change your life. So for all of our first timers, we want to say welcome to you. On behalf of my wife, Raquel, and myself, we just thank God for you showing up, up here today. Listen, you can be on many other platforms, but you're here, and so we don't take that lightly. And so for all of our first-timers that may be out there, we want to acknowledge you today. We just want you to click on there, click on the connect form, um, that we have some information that should be popping up in our comment section where you can connect with us and let us know. Just leave, listen, type it in the comments. Um, if you're in another state, another country, let us know where you're viewing in from. So we want to acknowledge you today. So we just thank God for you. Also for our Spirit of Fire Nation, we thank God for you. All of our uh, people that are out there, our partners, supporters, um, members connected with us. We thank God for you. And so listen, you are in our hearts and on our minds as well. And listen, y'all, this is the end of our fast. We've been fasting this week. I know some of you are excited about that. Some is like, hey, I might continue this. And so even during this time, this was a fast that I believe that God had laid on my heart for us to begin to do at the beginning of the year. And um, to just set aside this first full week <clears throat> to seek him, to get direction, insight, also for things to begin to transform and to change in your lives personally, but also in our ministry collectively. And so we just thank you. And listen, I've already seen some things happen within me personally um, that is happening within our ministry, that God is doing some wonderful things. And so we just thank God for you. And there's so much that's on my heart uh, that I want to share. And so uh, today is going to be good. Um, I was up, some of you maybe saw my post. I was up early this morning um, or late last night, however you want to say it, um, just in the word and praying and kind of just seeking and, and hearing some other things as to what I needed to say today. Um, and I believe that I do have a word for you that'll help you, that'll transform and that'll change. And so one of the things I always want to ask you is I want you to get engaged. There is no, and get involved in this message. What do I mean by that? There is no distance in the spirit. So wherever you are right now, I want you to set your expectation to hear from God today. I want you to expect to come with a listening ear and be ready to document, to write down what it is that God is speaking to you while I'm preaching, because the Holy Spirit will be flowing through me. And so there'll be things that one person is hearing and a, another person is hearing something different for them. And so whatever you need, you'll begin to hear. And so that's my prayer for you today. And so even with us um, breaking this fast, we want for all of those who are out there to be mindful of, you know, if you're not, if your body has adjusted, don't just go back to just shoving certain things in your body. Take this opportunity to begin to eat healthier, to be healthier, to do better um, and, and to move forward in those things. And so uh, one of the things that I heard many years ago that a, a, a great prophet of God um, shared that when the Lord appeared to him one time, or he spoke to him one time, he says, I would rather for you to live a fasted life. And so that's important. What do we mean by that? Not just picking times here and there to fast, but a fasted life is you, you know, being disciplined in certain areas, not eating as much as you might want to eat or learning how to push the plate away or how to push things away. Not too much television or, or screen time on your phones or whatever it is. Even fasting from negative thinking, that's, that's something that we all need to make sure that we begin um, to say, you know what, I'm not going to dwell on negative things, but I'm only going to dwell on the positive. And so even with that, that'll help to begin to transform how you think, which transforms how you believe, what will transform how you live. So that's going to be very important. So let's get into this today. Let's have a word of prayer. Um, I don't think there's anything I forgot for right now, but um, there'll be some other things I may be sharing later. So let's just go ahead and have a word of prayer. Go ahead right now. Click watch, click share, set your watch parties, do those things. Spirit of fire, I am asking you, even as your pastor, if this word is good for you, 
then share it with others. There's somebody else that needs to hear this word. So I'm asking all of you to come on board and share right now, share with someone right now, put it on your Facebook pages, put it on Instagram, Twitter, send, send out a text message, whatever it is, because we're going to deal with something in this series. And we've been dealing with the series now. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. So we're talking about intentionality, being intentional. Um, and so let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. I'm ready to jump into this. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom and knowledge and good understanding of the word of God to your people. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently. And so we ask right now, that you open up every heart to hear and I, eyes to see, ears to hear, and that the people of God, that their hearts are softened to receive the engrafted word. We covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you as the great teacher. I acknowledge you as the great comforter. I acknowledge you as the great guide, the one ready to give peace, direction, and instruction. I can't do this without you. I thank you for the grace, Father, that you placed upon my life to minister to the needs of your people. We thank you that the kingdom of God will manifest in this earth in a great and a mighty way. And we're expecting big things, great things, Father. And so we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor for it now. In Jesus' mighty, holy, and majestic name that we do pray praise and give thanks. Amen and amen. Well, Listen, y'all, if you have your Bibles, um, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three. Just type it on in. If you don't know where it is, type it in. You'll see it in your Bibles and your uh, software, flipping your concordances. Let's get there. Um, <laughs> we're going to be dealing with um, in this series, Nothing Just Happens. I want to talk today about seasons and sequential order of building your life, how you know, um, God is a God of seasons. And, you know, this word that was declared this year that this is a time for a kingdom renaissance. In other words, that there are going to be innovations, new ideas, technologies. There's going to be the, the tearing down of old systems and the replacing of new. There's going to be times where God is, he wants to get his will from heaven in earth through man through his church, the body of Christ. And so we have to now take on the mind of Christ to be a conduit for God to flow through us, with us and in us. And so we need to understand God's ways about doing things and we need to learn how to follow his pattern. So today I wanna to talk about seasons and building our lives in order. Um, this is gonna be very important. I've shared this constantly and I'm gonna keep sharing it. That God says if you're good in six areas of your life, that you're going to be, your life is going to be good. Number one is your spiritual life. Number two is your soul. Now your spirit life, you're born again, you're getting the nature and the life of God in you and growing spiritually. Then number two, and then we're going to talk about some things in the near future because I begin to write down some things as to how do you measure growth? How do you measure your spiritual growth? How do you know that you're growing spiritually? And so one of the ways just simply that you can know that you're growing spiritually is if now your decisions and actions line up with the word of God. That is so simple, but yet sometimes it's so hard for people. And so we want to see how do my decisions measure up with God's standard? Do my ways follow God's ways? Do my actions line up with his will, his purpose and his plan for my life? And so now we can begin to measure our growth. Even in our soul area, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, the imagination. And so how am I growing? Um, even developing my soul, developing healthy emotions. Am I not as angry as I used to be and, and, and allowing my anger to get away from me and those things of that nature? Am I more loving than I used to be? Am I developing in the fruit of the spirit, the character of Christ? These are things. How is my thinking? 
is, is my creativity greater now? Am I expanding? Is God able to get in now? Am I able to release all of the creative abilities that God has in me to fulfill his kingdom mandate in the earth? God is ready to grab hold of you and to flow through you at, at an accelerated rate. There is so much that's been stirring in my spirit that God wants to expedite processes and things, but there still is an order. God is still a God of order. So number three, your physical body, walking in divine health, not just um, being healed, but being healthy. So God wants to heal you, but he wants you to stay healed. He wants you to stay healthy. That's his will for us. And then our finances. God wants us to walk in covenant wealth. That's right, I said it, covenant wealth. He wants us to increase. God does not mind us being rich. He only minds us being covetous when we're seeking after things and money and that now it becomes an idol or mammon in our lives that usurps his authority. We wanna serve God with money, not for money, okay? So then even talking about our relationships, how are you interacting with people? How's your marriage? How's your relationship with your children? How are your business partnerships, even at work, wherever, in your family? How are your relationships? We're going to have to be intentional in developing healthy, whole relationships. And then lastly, um, your purpose. So when you function in your purpose and your destiny, what is it about your career, your ministry, your business, wherever you're supposed to be? You know, sometimes we always separate, quote unquote, the secular um, and, um, you know, the sacred and the secular, we think that when you work in church, that's just sacred. But when you out in corporate America, that's just secular, that's separated from God. No, God is everywhere. His kingdom ruleth over all. And he wants us to go and to realize that wherever we are, he is because we are the body of Christ, the anointed one in his anointing. So we, we want to see these things, but today I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about this order and seasons. And so here in Ecclesiastes chapter three, we're going to start in verse one. I'm going to read verses one and then go through verses nine through 13 in the New Living Translation. And it simply reads, for everything, for everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. What do people, verse nine, what do people really get for all their hard work? I have seen the burden God has placed on us all. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope, the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded that there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. Now, there's a lot that we can unpack here. The number one, everything that there is a season, that there is for everything, there's a season. Now, what I didn't read that the Bible went through, it talks about there's a time to live, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, all of these things. So to everything, there is a season. And sometimes we need to understand what is a season. A season is just by simple definition, an appointed, a set or appointed time. It's just a set or appointed time. Um, now, one of the things, you know, about seasons that they're real interesting that sometimes people even thought coming into this new year in 2021, that everything was just going to automatically change. They were just saying, you know what? I'm ready to come out of 2020. I'm ready for 2020 to be over and for 2021 to hit thinking that something just was going to magically change at midnight. The thing is this: sometimes you need to understand the difference between seasons and just set times and just time or the calendar. Yeah, the calendar year changed, but the season still hasn't changed that we're currently in. And so you need to understand the season so that you need to understand how to navigate, how to function in that season. Identify the season, but then learn how to function in it. And so now watch this, even in the natural, there are four seasons in a calendar year. We have winter, we got spring, summer, and fall, and these seasons come around every year. And the temperature is normally different in each season, which dictates like how we dress and activities that we do, even how we plan certain events. And these seasons have been orchestrated by God in the creation of this planet. Now these seasons are set. And if we understand the season that we're in, then it helps us to strategize, organize, and prepare for what we need to do. Um, 
you know, it, it's real interesting. Um, sometimes we can pray that seasons don't come and or that they're delayed, but it has been determined how these seasons arrive. So even though we like some seasons more than another, we need to adjust to the season. We need to adjust to the season that we're in. Let me, let me, let me talk about this, because even in the natural, the seasons that we have have been planned on the calendar. So the, every, the 21st of every quarter, it's a new season. So on the 21st of March, usually it's springtime. On the 21st of June, summer hits. On the 21st, around the 21st of September, it's fall. And then the 21st of December is considered winter. And so even though the calendar may say one thing, sometimes the temperatures are just in between seasons. And sometimes things colder weather can go into warmer quote unquote calendar uh, months or whatever. So sometimes just because the calendar said that the season changed, sometimes the weather and the atmosphere is still in that last season that you were in that we were in. And so sometimes, you know, just because it says that it's, um, you know, March 21st, well, it's spring, but it's still 40 degrees outside, even though the calendar said it's spring. And sometimes people say it's spring. And so now they just come on out of their coats and put on t-shirts and shorts, just ready to come out, throw on flip flops. But now the temperature is still the temperature of a winter season. And so sometimes just because a time change doesn't mean the season completely changed. And so we need to understand that God is saying, okay, what is the season that we're in? Or what is the season that you're in? There is a global season that we're in. Even during this pandemic, there are things that are going on, even with social unrest, there's a season that we're in. And so now you need to know how do I adjust? There's a season that you're in personally. What is the season that you're in? Some people are younger, some are older. Some people are just starting their careers. Some people are just ending their careers. Some people are thinking about retirement. Some people are thinking about what's the next endeavor I need to go into. What is the season that you're in? What is the thing that you need to begin to build? What is it that you need to focus on? This is what God is saying to you. Begin to now have a keen ear and you have to know how to discern the times. That's why it's going to be important for you to understand how to hear the voice of God in this season for your life so that you need to be led by the spirit of the living God to know where do I go? How do I maneuver here? How do I prepare? I remember... Um, as I was preparing for this, I remember when my daughters were born. And um, I remember that my wife and I had just got married. We had just got married. I mean, uh, while we were, I think we were dating at the time. No, we were engaged before our wedding. And my uncle, who's a pastor, he said, um, he had prophesied to us that we were gonna have twin girls. Now, this is the interesting thing. We had a list written of things that we were believing for. And on that list was to have twins. And I believe it was to have twin girls, if I'm not mistaken. We actually had it. My wife is here with me, so she's like, yep. But, and then when he began to prophesy to us, he says either they're going to be born in that month of September or you're, you're going to conceive by that time. Sure enough, they were born, September the 23rd. And when he told us, personally, it was like, mm, I don't receive that. Even though that was a desire of our hearts, we did not want it in that season of our marriage because we had just gotten married. We really didn't have time to be married and to enjoy one another as husband and wife. So my wife got pregnant two months after we got married. And I, I honestly, I, I remember the night that conception <laughs> took place. And my wife said, no, you didn't just say that. Yeah, 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 I do. I do too. She remembers too. It was a special night, glory to God. Mm, hallelujah. All right, all right, anyway, stay in the spirit, boy, stay in the spirit. All right, now, so, <laughs> so I remember, and it was like, God, why, why is it? Now, this is the interesting thing. She was taking birth control at the time, and it didn't work. You want to know why? Because God said, it's time for these girls to come into the earth for the purpose that I have for them. And when God's purpose is in motion, nothing's going to stop it. He said they have to come. And I see now why they had to come then. I see why they had to come then now. And even though there were times where we struggled and it was hard, but this is the thing. God still provided for us. God provided. I mean, people came out of the woodwork. They were given. There was 
I'm telling you, the big ticket items my wife and I didn't have to pay for. I mean, our church family jumped in. Other people jumped in and they gave us. We didn't have to pay for our cribs. I mean, that stuff was donated. Car seats, pampers, clothes, you name it. Man, it was provided for us. God knew. He knew for that season, provision had to show up for that season that we were in. And God is saying, I'm going to provide for you for whatever season that you're in. Don't worry. Provision is going to be there for you. And so you got to understand that and you got to know, but you got to recognize the season that you're in. Because sometimes you want provision for another season that you're not in yet. And God is saying, I need you to be content, not complacent, but to have the right attitude to know you have everything you need for the season that you're in. And so that as you're beginning to grow to your new season, there's going to be new provisions for the new seasons that he takes you into. So you need to recognize that wherever you are right now, you have everything that you need to be content, complacent, to be happy, to be full of joy. Now watch this. You don't be complacent. You're going from faith to faith and glory to glory. But to, you need to understand that where you are right now, you have everything that you need. I'm at five already. You got to be kidding me. Okay. All right. All right. That's my time over there. You just give me my time. Now watch this. I want to keep it moving. Now that can't be right because I know when I started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now this is the interesting thing. Now watch this. Now, man, I'm telling you, because I, as I was thinking back when my daughters were born, I was like, God, you were still with us, even though there were some things that happened because of personal lack of preparation of things. And so now watch this. When my wife got pregnant, she went on bed rest. She was in and out of the hospital. So even though it was a hard season for her and I, for her physically, even mentally and emotionally, because that meant she could not work any longer. So that was a hardship on us financially because of what I was making at that time. But God still brought provisions in our life during that season. And a lot of times now, this is the interesting thing. God warned us of not warned us, but he alerted us of the season that we were about to come into. But we didn't want to receive it at that time. So now watch this, because as I thought back on it. When God alerts you of seasons that you're about to come into, that gives you an opportunity to prepare yourself for the season that he's about to bring you into. I began to think about Joseph. God brought Joseph up through the ranks. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. Then he went into Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife lied on him. Now at each season, Joseph still prospered to a degree based on the grace or the anointing upon his life. And so as Joseph went through another season in Potiphar's house and he was ruling over everything in Potiphar's house, running things, that all of a sudden Potiphar's wife was trying to seduce him. Then she lied on him. He got thrown in jail. That was another time in his life. And even in jail, he was running the jail and still using his gifts while he was in jail, in prison. Then once he came out of prison, he now went to um, Pharaoh's house. And But watch this. When God showed Pharaoh the seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty, God used Joseph to interpret the dream. But watch this. God gave Joseph wisdom for the season that was coming. He said, in the seven years of plenty, put away 20%, a fifth part of what comes in, because there's going to be seven years of lack, lean years in the earth lean years in that country, lean years in that area. Now watch this. God didn't tell him to rebuke the season that was coming. God didn't rebuke the season that was coming. He said, this season is coming and you need to prepare for the season that's at hand and that we're in right now. And that's coming. And but well, watch this. If Joseph had not number one told Pharaoh what to do. And if number two, Pharaoh didn't receive the wisdom that God began to speak to him through Joseph, then the earth, the country, the land would have lacked. All because you didn't adhere to the word of the season. This is very important because now God is releasing words in the earth. He's releasing his prophets in the earth. He's releasing his mouthpieces to release things and to speak things. And we have one or two options to accept it or to reject it. 
And we can say, if we accept it and understand that this is of the Lord, then now, God, what is it that I need to do to prepare and to develop myself for this season that we're in? Even in this ministry, other ministries, we can't function in our season like another place functions in their season. God is saying, in our season and state that we're in, what do we need to do? What's the wisdom? Give us this day our daily bread. Give us the manna, the word from heaven that we need to hear to move forward. And I believe I've heard those things, people. I believe I've heard what God is saying to develop and to go forth. And we're about to change communities. And we're about to go and now have influence in this earth, not only locally, but also globally. And that's his call for us. So that means now, if you hear that and you're a part of this work, that you need to prepare yourself for what God wants to do with you, in you, and through you for this season that we're in collectively, but also recognize the season that you're in personally. All right. Come on now. Whoo. Now watch this. Solomon, he knew quite a bit about the law of timing. And he tells us there exists an appointed time for everything under heaven. There's an appointed time for everything. Then he lists several examples like birth, death, <clears throat> planting, reaping, weeping, laughing, and etc. Now, we don't control the timing of most events, but sometimes the best that we can do is to recognize the timing. Is to recognize the timing. I remember the Spirit of God spoke to me something several years ago. And he says, go teach my people who they are. And at that time, there were certain things um, that we had in place and people that were around. And one of the things that God showed me later on is that sometimes we need to strike when God says to strike. And God gives you what you need to fulfill the mandate that he's called for you to do. And folks, obedience is going to have to be very key. Hearing and obeying. Hearing and obeying that this is a season and this is a time because there is a window of opportunity. There is a window. Even in James, it talks about what is your life um, but like a vapor that's here today and then vanisheth away. So even if you live to 120, in relation to eternity, that is nothing. That is a small sliver of time. And Jesus says, occupy, do business till I come. We have to be proactive. We have to be busy about our father's business. So we need to have that mentality and that mindset that the timing is at hand. We got to work. We got to, listen, we got to live like he'll come in any minute, but work like he won't come for another thousand years. But at the same time, we need, and I begin to adjust that. We need to work like in times that we know that he's coming soon. That means we need to get fulfilled what God told us to do. And we need to get on the ball and you need to get on the ball. And if you know that God called you to be a part of this work, if you know that God called you to have a significant role in this, in this vision, then that means you need to get on the ball and you need to now say, God, work in me the things that you need to work in me so that I'm ready for your service at your command. God, I'm telling you, there's nothing like being ready for when your number is called. See, see, you prepare when nobody's watching. See, it, it's, this, it's this adage that we get, champions aren't made in the ring, that this was doing, you know, a boxing quote, that champions aren't made in the ring, they're simply discovered there. That means while, you, while nobody's watching, you're working. Now, while nobody's watching, you're praying. You're consecrating yourself. You're getting in the presence of God. You're working things in you to get you ready as God prepares to use you in certain moments and key moments of your life. Don't waste your season. Don't waste your time, folks. Now, Ecclesiastes teaches us several important points that I want to go over real quick. Number one. It is our responsibility to recognize God's timing, not to change it. It's our responsibility to recognize God's timing and not to change it. You got you got to you know, we talk about catching waves like a surfer catches a wave. A surfer doesn't create a wave. A surfer just catches the wave that's already created and rides it. 
there are certain waves that hit our earth. And I begin to tell someone, it's like every 10 years I begin to see, because I like church history, studying church history and just seeing how God has moved in the past or how he has done some things in the past. And a lot of times it gives you a pattern. If you begin to study how God functions and flows, you'll see how he moves in patterns. Some people, hey, it might be threes, sevens, it might be this. But I begin to see even in the word, there's something about this stages of three. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. Seed, time, and harvest, 30, 60, 100 fold. Some other cases we see them in sevens, that those numbers, I'm not dealing with numerology right now, but these things are significant and we need to watch the times that we're in. And we need to recognize that this is a moment. And when God spoke and said that this is a kingdom renaissance, that that means there is something that God is emphatic about getting his way of doing things in the earth. Now, okay, I'm, I'm, I think I got to go here. So now the question is, God, how do I do that? See, my part of my job is to train you as to who you are so that you can be released to go into whatever it is you're called to do. And so when you understand how to function in the spirit, how to walk by faith, how to learn how to increase and give, how to learn how to walk in love, how to develop the fruit of the spirit, how to hear the voice of God. And if you understand these things, what does the Bible say about business? What does it say about relationships? So that no matter where you go, you'll begin to function in the fullness. It's an unction to function that God's grace will be upon you to get the job done. I'm dealing with number one. Number two thing that we learn in Ecclesiastes, that it is our responsibility to accept and cooperate with God's timing. Sometimes you're so busy fighting the season that you ain't even cooperating with God in the season. You're so busy coming against it that you got to recognize that, wait a minute, in this season, there's some changes that need to be made. And you're trying to jump seasons when God says, I'll never do things out of order. There is order in the kingdom of God. And you're trying to jump to step three and you ain't done one and two yet. And God says you can't handle three because you ain't done one and two. And sometimes people are praying. You're saying, Lord, now I, I want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> but we saw Paul doing this. He says, Lord, look, take this thing from me. He says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. So even in the midst of what you're going through, I've given you the equipment, the energy, the strength necessary to endure, overcome, and come out of that thing that you're currently going through. Because you don't realize that season that you're in is your preparation time for the next assignment that God has for you. And so you got to understand that there were things I had to go through as a young person because God called me to now teach you about your authority. So that means there were moments I had to exercise the authority he had given me and I had to become proficient enough in it to now transform and change things in my life to now grow and increase. There were things when he talks about me teaching on your identity, there were moments where I struggled with my identity. There was one moments I struggled, God, who did you make me to be? Where am I supposed to be? How do I fit in? Where should I go? Who should I talk to? What is it that you created and called me to do? And watch this. He said, there are things that I've allowed you to go through. There's some things you didn't have to, but there are certain things that it was in your path for your life. It was to grow you because how you resist in that season, how you act in that season will determine if you're promoted to the next one. And God is saying, I need for you to come on now. I need for you to get on the ball. I need for you to stop being distracted because you're so easily distracted when things come up that now all of a sudden you jump out of turn, you get off course, you're, now, you, you're not profitable, you don't function well when you go through stuff. And God needs for you to learn how to fight with one hand and build with the other. That while you're growing, there are things you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to deal with because you have an adversary, the devil. And if you just want your life to be so pristine, where it's never trouble that shows up, nothing ever happens, you might as well, I was going to say, you might as well go on and die. Because listen, while you're in this world, Jesus said in this world, you're going to have tribulation. I'm not encouraging anybody to die and just give up. Listen to what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Listen, if you are here, you are called now to grow. And if God allowed you to go through it, then now you got to realize there's something in you that can handle it and you can come out of it with flying colors. And that's what I want to encourage you, that you will come through this. 
you will come through this in the name of Jesus. Whoever I'm talking to right now, listen, if you got to cry while you're doing it, go ahead and cry, wipe the tears, start confessing the word and come out of that thing. And listen, you are coming out as pure gold, glory to God. I know you've been through a lot. I know you've been hurting. I know you. some of you have been wondering when, God, when. It is when you wake up and your eyes are open to see that you have everything that you've been praying about, but it's in seed form. And God is saying, if you can just see what you have, you can now begin to take it, multiply, and now replenish it and put it out there. And God will take you from one season to the next and you will be in a new place before you even know it. Before, listen, even before the next quarter of this year, things can transform and it can change and it can turn around. Glory to God. And you got to understand. This is my time. This is my season. Okay, Lord, I'm going to stop crying about it. I'm going to stop fighting against it. Just use me. Tell me what I need to do. God already told some of you what you need to do. You just need to get your tail up and do it. Get off your butt and move forward in that thing. Okay. Number three that we see that he tells us that our alignment with God's timing makes a great difference. Our alignment with God's timing makes a great difference. It's, it's something about catching the rhythm, the rhythms of God. There was one time I began to say it like this, the rhythms of grace on your life. It, it's, 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 it's something about catching the rhythm. I don't know if y'all ever seen people when they double dutch, and you see the double dutch when they try to come in, and they get that, they're trying to get their time before they jump in, and then they get into their flow. And sometimes that's how you feel like there's a rhythm. There's a flow that's going on in the earth. And sometimes you're trying to figure out within yourself, what's the rhythm? What's the thing? What's the pattern, God? What is it that I need to do? And once you catch that rhythm, it's something about catching that rhythm and that flow for your life that you'll begin to see things manifesting. You'll begin to see favor manifesting like you had never seen before because now you're in the rhythm and the stream of your season and your season of grace, your season of favor, your season of manifestation. There'll be things, contracts waiting on you. Oh man, it's like angels waiting at certain posts of your life to help manifest what it is that God has called you to do and created you to do. Amen. So in other words, stop waiting for everything to be conducive for you to launch and do it. Launch and you'll see. Don't see and then launch. You won't see until you launch. Okay. <laughs> Number four thing we see. God has made everything appropriate in its time. God has seen. He's made everything appropriate in its time. Everything. Timing is everything. Sometimes the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. Like never before, this was the time for you to write your book. This was the time for you to begin to do some things. Don't waste this moment. Because some of you had to be still for a second to hear God. <laughs> did you get better during this last year? Or did you get better? Did things go worse? Or did it expose what was there that needs to be adjusted? Number five, God put eternity in our hearts. So we must trust God to communicate his timing to us. He knows. So we got to trust that he'll show us that um, the season and the time. It's just like in, in James. Um, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and abrade not, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Because he that wavers like the wind with the sea, with the wind tossed to and fro, let not that man think he should receive anything for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Sometimes you don't believe or expect to hear when you pray and ask God. You need to expect that God will reveal to you the timing. And when that thing is in your heart, I'm gonna have to do a teaching on, I think I'm gonna end up doing it in this session, on hearing God, hearing the voice of the Lord, learning how to trust the inward witness, the promptings and the leadings of God. You're gonna to have to hear from God. There's no getting around it. You can't keep going to other people trying to get them to hear from God for you. It's time to finally grow up and hear from God yourself. So we need to help teach you and train you. How do you get in a position to recognize the voice of God, to recognize the leading and the prompting of the spirit of God so that you can make wise choices and decisions so that you can stop con conferring with flesh and blood. It's okay to have, I understand a multitude of counselors, their safety, all of these things. 
but no one can fully tell you your assignment. The creator has to tell you your assignment. Now we can let you see, let you know certain things that we see, but until you get it, <laughs> you got to spend time with God. I can't spend time with God for you. You got to grow up. It comes to a point. I told my children, um, I told one of my daughters one time, I says, now that you're, my girls are 21 years old. I said, I told one of them, now that you're 21, our conversations will be different. I'm not going to talk to you like you're 10. You're 21 now. You're in adulthood. So now our, our relationship is adjusting now. So our conversations will be different in how to help you navigate now this season, this stage of your life. And God will talk to you according to the season that you're in and preparing you for the one that you're coming into. Every good father would do that. And so he, he's trying to prepare you. He's been speaking things to you in times past to get you ready for right now. <laughs> What's the season? I, I'm, I'm going to share this and I'll probably end here. Paul gave us a sequence for building a person's life. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, he says this, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, and he says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, meaning completely and totally. And I pray God for your whole spirit and soul and body to be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body is the sequence of living from the inside out, not the outside in. Spirit, soul, and body is the sequence of living from the inside out, not the outside in. So many times we work on the outward, how we look, what we're dressing, uh, dressing in, how we're dressing, what we're driving what we're living in. And those things are cool and important and have their place and all. But if you adorn yourself on the outside, but on the inside, you nasty. Listen, growing up, I used to hate seeing a good looking woman that cuts like a sailor. It was just something like just the, the just the verbiage, just the, the vernacular come out of her mouth. It's like, man, she look good. But then all of a sudden, if you hear her talk, mm -mm, that make all what's on the outside look like nothing. I didn't like to see women smoking. It's like, ooh, I wouldn't want to kiss somebody with an ashtray mouth. That's just how, it's like, no. It was, those were things, because sometimes it's the inward. Even God tells women, adorn yourself on the inside, talking about your, your, your character, your demeanor. Men, we're to do the same thing. We're supposed to walk in character and honor and integrity and walk in love and the fruit of the spirit. See, we need to develop those things so that it sustains us to the levels that God wants to take us. See, your character, listen, your gifts can get you somewhere that your character can't keep you. And so you need to now work on your character at this season of your life so that while you going on the come up and the glow up and, and the come up, that now when you finally get there, you realize that the weight of my character can't, the strength of my character can't support the weight of this season and level that I'm in. And God will not graduate you to a season that you are not prepared to handle. He loves you too much because he knows it'll destroy you. You want everybody to know your name, but do you want everybody to know what you're doing? These are things we got to prepare and we're seeing it now more than ever that there's an uncovering of character flaws. We, we're not talking about when we, God talks about being perfect. He means mature, developed in an area of your life. So he wants us to grow spiritually so that we can now handle and be the shining example in the earth that we as the church is supposed to be. It doesn't mean that we're flawless. God used flawed people, scarred people, hurt people, broken people, all of that. And he wants to heal. He wants to mend, set free and deliver and make whole. Spiritually, mentally, physically. In your spiritual life, in your soul life, and in your physical life. But it starts on the inside, the real you, the spirit man. In 1 Corinthians 3, a lot of times, yeah, we just talk about 
working on the outward of things, not realizing that everything is birthed or originated out of the spirit, the true source. Everything is birthed out of the spirit. This earth was birthed out of the spirit. Creation was birthed out of the spirit. The unseen birthed the seen. And we got to recognize that. In 1 Corinthians 3.10, Paul says it like this, the Amplified Version, says it like this, according to the grace, the special endowment for my task, the special endowment, he calls it the grace, the special endowment, the empowerment, the anointing, the ability for the task that I have of God bestowed on me like a skillful architect and a master builder, I laid the foundation, and now another man is building upon it. Let each man be careful how he builds upon it. Paul said here that he had a grace on him to be a master builder, a skillful architect. See, the architect is the designer. See, I always see I used to want to be an architect when I was growing up. And so I, I went into drafting classes at the school, um, at the technical school in the city that I'm in. And I remember seeing these things, man. And I love drawing and I love developing things. I love building, not realizing that God was going to use me to build and to develop things in this kingdom and to develop people and things of that nature. And so now that same thing, I love building. I love the architectural process. See, when an architect designs, if you ever seen blueprints, Blueprints are so detailed and it looks like the skeleton of what will be. It's the inward things, the measurements, the angles, all of these things. And the blueprint is what the contractors use to now build the thing. And you got to understand that God will have people and his angels and empowerment to help you build what you see. The blueprint is the image. What do you see? Now God says, be skilled in developing what you see. And he wants you to be skilled in it. If you want a great marriage, okay, what are the tools necessary and the equipment necessary for it? If you want to be a great parent, a great father, a great mother, a great leader, a great business person, a great minister of the gospel, whatever it is you want to be great at, begin to develop yourself and the skill sets in those areas to now be ready to maximize when your time comes. God created in sequence. And one of the things we need to see is that when God created, see, in Genesis 1, God created in sequence and he didn't bring man into the equation until after the sequence creation was completed. <laughs> he didn't put Adam into something that wasn't completed already yet. You, you got to let that marinate. He didn't put him in something that wasn't created or completed yet. See, God didn't create the birds first or they would have been flying around in darkness. See, he created the heavens and the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars. He created the light. He created the atmosphere, the environment, then put man in it. What is God trying to create to put you in? What is he telling you to build for your life so that now what is the life? Listen, you got one life. You might as well be intentional about how you want to build it. What is the building process? I wrote this down. Take care of it so that it can take care of you. Take care of the thing so that it can take care of you. How are you developing yourself, even in business? Sometimes you need to sow into your business until your business grows the way now it can pay you back. Sometimes people pull out too soon and they try to pull out from the profits when you need to reinvest back into the business to keep it growing and to keep it moving. Then you're trying to figure out why is it not growing the way it should? Because you're taking the you're taking the funds out of it that God wanted to use to help grow it more until it got to a certain point. And then something as simple as if you plan until we get to this level of profitability, I won't take a salary. Something that simple. See, when you begin to plan, you become intentional. I need, if, if I know I'm getting ready, see one of the things when I was, um, uh, when my wife and I were engaged, we were both working out. See, I was looking to get my body in order for my wife 
and she was doing the same thing. We were, you know, you in love and you just everything. We just, you know, we just in love with each other. And then too, at that point, because I was really out of shape at one point. And then all of a sudden I began to go to the gym regularly. I was getting involved in certain activities, physical activities, playing basketball, doing things, step team, dancing. I was doing a lot of stuff. All of a sudden I began to slim down, begin to tone up at that time. I need to go back and do a lot of those things. Don't laugh at me. It's not, some of y'all need to do the same thing. It's all right. But, <laughs> but I'm telling you, when you're preparing for a season, you're very intentional about it. And this was going to come to play. You're going to have to be disciplined with it. Now, what are some foundational building blocks for your life? Tune in next time and I'll give it to you. <laughs> I may do this on Thursday night. I'll probably continue with this to help you continuously build. It's time to build, folks. It's time to be intentional. It's great for us to hear from heaven. But now you got to realize we've been empowered to execute what we hear from heaven and to be intentional with it. Every head bowed, every eye closed right now. Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We give you praise, glory, and honor for this word that's been shared today. We thank you, Father, right now that it's gone into the hearts of your people. We thank you right now for transformation and change that takes place. And if there's anybody out there today who has never made Jesus the Lord of their life, we thank you right now that you will begin to speak to their hearts. Let them know that there is a no-so salvation, that there is literally a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And so we just thank you for it right now. So speak to their hearts and we thank you for everlasting life and redemption that has been provided for them through the shed blood of Jesus. Let them know now, bring a peace upon their hearts and let them know that, hey, I'm here for you. I love you and I want to receive you into my kingdom. Now, for those that are under the sound of my voice, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I just want you to simply repeat this prayer after me. If you want to get born again, if you want to be a child of God, if you want to go to make it to heaven, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I want you to do this right now. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family folks. If that's you and you prayed that prayer of faith and listen, we want to connect with you. We want to help you grow and develop in the things of God. We appreciate you and love you so much. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, you need to get in a good church. Good Bible believing, Bible teaching ministry that knows the word of God, the power of God, demonstrates the love of God and will help train and teach and develop you as to who you are as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, I don't know about you, but I recommend Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I recommend this ministry to you. I know that we will feed you the word of life to help you to live the good life that God has already created and provided for you to live. Listen, simply just connect with us. Let us know. Hey, y'all, I just got born again. I just got saved. That word was powerful. It was impactful and powerful in my life. And I, I, want, I want more. I want to receive more. Listen, connect with us. There's some information that's coming up. I believe in the comments section where you can connect with us or on the screen. Listen, you can go to our website at spiritoffire.us, spiritoffire.us. Fill out the connect form. Let us know. I got born again. There may be somebody, hey, I want to, I want to connect with your ministry. I don't have a church home. I want to make Spirit of Fire my home. Oh, listen, come on, let us know. We would love to have you. Then maybe somebody says, man, I have a church home, but I like what you're doing, man. I want to be with you. I want to support. Hey, you can connect with us as a partner. Listen, just come on. You can pray for us and then we pray for you and then we provide the word and, and spiritual nourishment for you and to, to be a blessing to you spiritually, physically, financially, in, in different areas, however things are, are going on. We want to be here to be a blessing to you. All right. So now if that's you. You want to connect with the ministry? 
Come on, come on. We would love to have you. And so listen, there's that. Just fill out the information, let us know, and we will have someone contact you. We just thank you so much for showing up here today. And so we don't believe it's by chance that you showed up here today, but we also want to give you an opportunity to now get involved and connected with this ministry through your giving. That's right. We love to call it opportunity for prosperity time, where even as you honor God in your giving and as you give, God says it'll be given back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. I'm believing with you and for you for financial miracles, supernatural turnarounds, miraculous breakthroughs, debt cancellations, increases, promotions, new contracts, witty inventions, ideas, concepts, divine favor, things changing and rearranging. Glory to God for those that's believing to get pregnant. I'm believing for you to have to conceive this year. Glory to God. I'm believing with you. Glory to God. Listen, I'm telling you put, I felt something there with that one. I'm believing with you that God opens up your womb, whatever he got to create, recreate, bring back into life, whatever he got to do, that God will do what's necessary to increase you, prosper your physical body for you to produce and be fruitful and multiply glory to God so that you enjoy the fruit of your womb and your children in this season of your life. Glory be to God. Now, if you desire to sow, information is coming up on your screen. Whichever avenue by which you desire to sow, get involved. I believe our worship is incomplete without that seed sown. Even in scripture, God talks about not coming before him empty or empty handed. Even in the book of Genesis, we are not to come before you, him empty. This is a part of worship. I know some people say all the church want is your money and all of this stuff. And like, okay, where's the money going? The money here has been going to production equipment, to outreach efforts. There are things that we're doing to now bring you quality ministry that God is saying, listen, we ain't stealing money. We ain't slipping something here and there. No, the money here is being used for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And God wants you to be a part of that. And so we just thank you so much for the time and consideration. And listen, just becoming a partner with this ministry and connecting with us. And listen, your seed is going to be recognized and God will honor that seed song. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. And so we just thank you so much for those that have supported and that have been there um, in past and present. And we just believe God with you for increase and promotion. Well, y'all. I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. And listen, the fast is over. Go ahead and enjoy something. Some of you are like, you know what? I'm ready to give me a slice of cake or something. Hey, whatever it is, we want to just uh, wish those a happy birthday coming up. I believe tomorrow and Tuesday, uh, we have uh, Rhonda Westbrook. We have Angel Westbrook. Um, their birthdays are coming up this week. So I just want to pass. I want to say happy birthday to you. And for those others that are coming up, please let us know. We make sure that we get everybody your birthdays, anniversaries, special occasions. If you're getting promotions, things of that nature, let us know. We want to celebrate with you. We want to celebrate everything that God is doing with you, in you, and through you. If you got a raise, let us know. I'm getting a raise. If you're retiring, let us know you're retiring. If you're celebrating an anniversary, celebrate. listen, let us know, man. We want to shout with you. Happy anniversary, happy new year, happy everything. So, so we just thank God with you. So, hey, y'all, I'm out of time now. I'm going to go right now. I'm going to give me something to eat. But I'll be back soon to, to share another life-changing word with you. So on behalf of Spirit of Fire Fellowship, this is Pastor Mike May. We want to just say God bless you. We love you. What we here are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. And I declare and decree that the favor of God is upon your life. The grace of God will manifest strong on your behalf. And you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. God bless you all. And I'll see you real soon. Peace. <laughs>